Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, again, uh, thank you so much to Prajajilan Ustaz Faris for the recitation of Anak Surat. Uh, so first of all, I would like to welcome all of you okay, uh, to our Usra, to our weekly Usra. Uh, you know, um, what we call it, to be consistent in one in one particular action in our life is actually very difficult. Okay? So the purpose of having this weekly usra is not just to basically inculcate the sense of or the feeling of love towards knowledge. So I'm going to introduce to you the Islamic study program that Shari Ali Ahmad is developing right now. Okay? So I have completed several books. This is actually one of the books. Okay? And we call it, the subject is Akhlaq and Adab, Islamic Ethics and, and Etiquette. And that is the, the course code, lah, just like university. Okay? Don't call it ISA, call it ISD please. Yeah? Alright, so Islamic study and then ethics. Yeah? Alright. Okay, now let us, let us go to chapter 1 definition of akhlaq and adab. You know, we always speak about akhlaq and then let us here, you know, see the definition of akhlaq. Yeah? So, akhlaq, literally, akhlaq is derived from the word khalqan, which means creation. You know, you are familiar with the word Allah as our khalik, as our creator. Okay? And you know one of the famous questions if you learn Islamic philosophy is people all, will always ask you how do you prove the existence of, of Allah? And there is one argument from the logical argument it is called the argument from creation. Okay, I will give you a simple example. When you see this table, this table is a product. Then this product must have a producer. So when you see the table, it makes you believe in the existence of the carpenter. Yes, because carpenter produce the, the table, for example. Okay? So the same thing with God. When you see human, human is actually the product of God. We are the product of God. Okay? We are the makhluk and Allah is the, the holy. So that should prove the existence of the creator. But of course the argument is very long. Lah. Okay? I'm giving you just, just the essence. Okay? Alright, so it means creation, origination and, and formation. The term akhlaq itself is defined literally as inborn character and natural disposition of a person. Disposition means the state. What is your condition? Is your condition good or bad? In general, akhlaq is divided into two categories. Number one, good akhlaq, al-akhlaq al-mahmuda. And number two is evil akhlaq or akhlaq al -manmuma. Yeah. So conceptually, the term akhlaq has a number of definitions by various scholars. But I quoted from Al-Ghazali from Ihya al -Mudin. This book is very famous. Yeah? So Imam Al-Ghazali said, Akhlaq refers to an established state of the soul which action proceeds easily without any need for prior thinking and deliberation. So let's try to understand. So there are four key points of understanding from the above definition of the term Akhlaq. Number one, Akhlaq depends on the nature and the state of someone's soul. Okay, so your akhla depends on your roh. If your soul, your roh is good, then the akhla can be good. You know, that's why people say if you are good inside, then this goodness will be projected outside. So this basically has rejected, you know, the statement when people say, you know, I'm actually good inside, although I like to backbite. You know, I'm actually good inside, although I'm, you, you know, wearing short skirt. You always heard this in the melody. Or go galaxy, for example. All those celebrities, and I'm sexy, but actually I'm very good in art. <laughs> That's very wrong. Because according to Al Ghazali, when you are good inside, the goodness will be projected outside. Uh, but of course, when we define goodness, goodness must be defined from the lenses of Islam. Okay, some people say, good, you know, goodness means when you do good, it doesn't mean whether whether you, you yourself are good or not. Okay? You can be wearing short skirt, but at the same time, you can give charity. Yeah, that charity is good, but you yourself, not good. Are not having good akhlaq. Okay? Alright. Okay. So, where is now? Okay. Someone who possesses good soul is considered as having good akhlaq, while the one whose soul is not good is considered as having bad akhlaq. In sum, the nature and status of akhlaq is to be determined by the nature and state of one's, one's soul. So the soul must be good and insha'Allah the goodness will be projected outside. So it will bring us to the next question. How do we make our soul good? Okay, uh, so we will discuss about that later, insha'Allah. Yeah? And number two, 
The state of the soul, either good or bad, must be well established and strong. This occurs as the consequence of constant training of the soul. Which means, if you want to have good akhlaq, you have to train yourself. You cannot get good get good akhlaq in one night. Okay, because changes or transformation needs time. You cannot expect someone to change over a night. So if you want to become a good da'i, for example, okay, and you want to to give good knowledge to people, you want to give good akhlaq to people, then you have to expect this person. You cannot expect this person to change over a night. You must give time. So that's why if you look at the hadith of the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Prophet said, "Muru awla dakum bi salat, wahum abnahu sakonsiin." Prophet said, "Give commandment. Ask your children to perform salat whenever they are seven years old." And Prophet said after that, "Wa dribu hum wa hum abnahu asharasini," and beat them up. Ukulah mereka if they refuse to perform salat at the age of ten. So Prophet said, "Start asking your children to do salat at seven, but you can only punish them." At ten years old, so you give them three years of time to actually train themselves to perform salat. So the same thing with people. Okay, if you look at, for example, in the, the sirah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, Prophet spent twenty three years doing that work to transform the whole society in Arabia, in you know, in the Arabian Peninsula, the Hijaz, or in Mecca and also Madinah. So it took Prophet twenty three years. So you cannot expect people to change in twenty three hours, for example. Okay, it takes time. All right. Okay, and number three, action are to be executed and done as a manifestation of the state of one soul. Good and well established soul is expected to produce good action and vice versa. Ah, uh, which means if someone claim, if you claim you have good akla. Then you must do it. You cannot just say, you know, I have, I have good Allah, I have your Allah, and that's it. You do nothing. The same thing with iman. Okay, if you look at the definition of iman, iman is the belief in heart, and and what? And to be expressed by your tongue, and to be practiced by your limb. Okay, maksudnya iman percaya dalam hati dilafazkan melalui lidah. Dan dilakukan dengan anggota badan. So you must do it. You must prove it by action. So the same thing lah. If you see item ready punch, for example, then you should prove it. And you cannot just prove it by saying. Just you cannot just say I love ready punch. Prove and say nothing else. You must prove it by by doing something. If you say you love your wife, for example, then you have to do something. Prove it. Yeah. Alright. Okay. Uh, and then number four, the action done by a person, either good or bad, come naturally and spontaneously without any need for prior thinking. And this is very important. Someone who has good akla, whenever he, whenever he see like for example a rubbish on the floor, he will just take it without thinking first. He will just take it and put it in the dustbin. But if you see the rubbish and you think, should I take it or not? Should I take it or not? Then you are not having good akhlak yet. You should try to to train yourself. So according to Al Ghazali, you don't have to think at all. You will do it spontaneously. Ah, uh, you see an old man trying to cross the road, and then you stop and help spontaneously. You just help. Oh yeah. All right. But of course, in this uh, modern time, uh, it, it is only applicable in some situation. Lah. Okay, if you are driving twelve, you know, or maybe one in the morning, you see someone, what we call it, uh, someone nearby, you know, uh, nearby the road, then it is very dangerous. Lah, for you to stop, then you have to think first. Lah. <laughs> okay, uh, that that is something else. Yeah, but this one, something that is that is very doable. So when you see, you just do it. Yeah. Alright, so the term akhlaq in its plural form, fuluk, appears in Quranic verses. Okay, and you Muhammad are an uh, on exalted standard of character. Okay, wa inna ka, wa inna ka la, wa inna, wa inna ka la ala fuluk ina azim. Okay, and Allah mentioned in the Quran, Prophet has or had a very excellent character of akhlaq. Okay, alright. So in conclusion, 
Akhlaq refers to the state of the soul State of the soul It depends on your soul Okay That determines human action It is considered as internal and hidden state of the soul Akhlaq is hidden Okay, you cannot see akhlaq And that's why While action, it is an It is, uh, is its upward manifestation That's why you must do it By your, by your body lah You must do it to prove it So in addition, the term akhlaq is closely related to the word khalik The creator and makhluk, the creature Therefore, akhlaq assume a good relationship between the creator and the creatures And between the creatures and the creatures Makhluk and makhluk That's so, why so sometimes people say it You know, uh, I have one friend He did, he, he doesn't perform solat But he is, he is very good with people He communicates very well He always give charity But he never do solat Is he good or bad person? According to Islam He's not a bad person uh, He's not a good person sorry. He's a bad person He's a person having bad akhlaq Because when we speak about akhlaq, akhlaq has two dimensions The akhlaq with the creator, with God first Okay, we call it Hamdu bin Allah And then the akhlaq with humans, Hamdu bin Allah So both must be good The same thing with someone who performs solat very well But at the same time treat others bad Is he good or bad? He's bad So both must be, must be bad Yeah? So if you claim you are having good akhlaq You know the purpose of us learning this Is not to judge people yeah? uh, If you learn this and later on you judge people You have the problem of egoism Because you don't want to point to yourself When you point at people <laughs> Okay? Alright So it's actually to identify ourselves and to improve our personality Yeah? Alright Okay, so in English the word ethics is used to denote the meaning of character or behavior of a person It is defined as a system of moral principle, rules of conduct or science that deal with moral In other words, ethics is the study of right and wrong in human conduct You know one of the biggest question in human life is how to determine which one is good which one is bad If you read the book of many ulama, if you read even the book of many philosophers Yeah, they have been struggling to define which one is good, which one is bad. It is not easy. Yeah, if I ask you, for example, what is good and what is bad, it's not easy, right, to answer. Someone might say, okay, something good is something beneficial, and then it will bring you to the next question: beneficial for who? Is it beneficial only for you, or for others, or for you and others? You have to think about it. Okay? And that's why in Islam, good and bad can only be determined by, by Allah. So as Muslim, whenever people ask you what is good and bad, it's very simple. Good and good is what Allah say good, bad is what Allah say bad. Yeah? But if you go into into philosophy, for example, you will find it very difficult, very very difficult. Yeah? Uh, they have many many disagreement. Alright, okay, okay. Let's see here ada. Yeah. So the word ada linguistically means to invite people for for good, not for food. Okay? <laughs> Alright, alright. Uh, yeah, actually food. Sorry, sorry. Okay, the word adab linguistically means to invite people for food. Adab. Okay, this is in Arabic, the language. Adab means to invite you to to get some food. Okay, and the word Arabic maduba is the word derived from the word adab, which means to invite all many people for all types of of food. Okay, of course this is from the language. Okay, it is also to connote the meaning of custom, habit, ethic, etiquette, manner of conduct, and and good manner. Adab hence include all that is good, every normal characteristic, habit or trait that is included within the scope of adab. Okay, adab is natural and it is it isn't really taught but learned, but it is naturally developed. 
Okay, a good character or akhlak hence beget good action or manners, adab. Whereas the bad character yields bad action or bad bad adab. Okay, adab basically refers to the action itself. Yeah, uh, the akhlak more like the understanding of the action. Yeah, alright. And Prophet SAW mentioned in the hadith, my Lord has taught me good manners and he mannered me well. Yeah, uh, waku. What is the the Arabic ayat for this? The Arabic matan. Anyone know it? Adi bani Rabi wa asin tak dibi. Yeah, this is actually a doa. You can make a doa from this from the hadith. Yeah. Alright. So the Quran is the most significant source bestowed by Allah for the human being to refer uh, to refer to pertaining to human conduct. There are some elements in the Holy Quran which serve as fundamental principle and concept of ethics and morality in Islam. Yeah. Okay. For example, let's see here. The nature of right and wrong, good and bad, moral and immoral. To describe the nature of right and wrong as the most important essence of Allah, the Holy Quran used various expression. Okay, Al Quran used many words to describe which one is good, which one is bad. Yeah, to signify the concept of moral and religious goodness, the term such as Al Khair. Whenever Al Quran used the word Al Khair, that thing is good, goodness. So you can do it. Whenever Al Quran used the word Al Biru, righteousness, you can do it as well. Whenever Al Quran used the word Al Qis. Or al iqsad it means equality. It is good. Whenever Al Quran uses the word al adlu, okay, justice, it is good. Whenever Al Quran uses the word al haq truth and right, it is good. Whenever Al Quran uses the word al ma'roof, known and approved, is good. Whenever Al Quran uses the word al taqwa, piety, it also means good. Okay, so these are all employed by the Quran to indicate the right and religious moral status. Okay, pious action are normally referred to as salihah. Amal soleh, we call it as solihah, and evil and sinful action are normally referred to as as sayyiah. Okay, for example, Allah says in Quran, "Kaulun ma'arufun wa ma'ufiratun khairun min sodaqatin yatubahuha ada Allah wa niyun alim." Okay, Allah says, "Kind speech and forgiveness are better than charity followed by injury." Uh, charity followed by injury. What does it mean? When you give sedekah. And then you tell people, that's it. Your sedekah will be injured. Yeah, of course you tell people for the sake of showing off. And Allah is free of need and and forbearance. Yeah. And another ayat: Wal takumin kur ummatun yadauna ilal khair, wa yamuru na bil ma'roof, wa yamkau na bil mukar, wa ula ikamu nuflihun. Allah say, and let there be arising from you a nation inviting all to good and enjoying what is right and forbidding what is wrong. And those will be successful. Yeah, how to be successful in life? Allah answered that in the Quran. Allah say, if you want to be successful, what you should do? You should ask people to do good, and you should stop people from doing the wrong. And then you will be successful. Yeah, you want to be successful? Then do it. Yeah. Ya Allah say again, Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu ka'u wasjudu wa'budu rabbakum wa'f'alu al-khair la'alakum tuflihun Or you who believe, bow and prostrate and worship your Lord and do good that you may succeed Again, if you want to be successful in life, then do good 